I'll show you that the easy, a simple way of doing it so that um, you don't have to go through all that trouble is just to pull, just to pull out your planter and then just add water. <laughs> and then you have your, we have an overflow hole so you can't overwater. And um, and that's it. And um, just to take take home the point of why or how effective sub-irrigated planters are in terms of holding moisture in the reservoir. This planter here, um, we water these maybe once or two, a week or once every two weeks. Okay? If we were to do that in a, in a, in a garden bed, it would be dead. It would dry out, it would turn yellow or brown, and that would be that. So, that just shows you um, like how this saves, this actually does literally save water, um, gallons and gallons of water um, in terms of being able to, to grow um, plant your plants. All right, so I'm gonna take you through the steps on how we, how we go about building one of these. So you take, a, you take your, we're gonna take one of these uh, water bottles here, okay? We're gonna take our scissors, if you're doing this um, with your kids, you probably want to do the cutting for them unless they're, you feel, you know, if you know that they can use scissors, you know, I trust, trust it, uh, your judgment as, as parents or guardians. Um, and then we just cut into the bottle. Now, where you cut, like, I just made the decision really fast <laughs> in terms of where I cut and how I cut, but just remember, wherever you cut, the distance between here and wherever you cut is the size, is the depth of the planter, okay? So if you're growing something that you know needs a lot of vertical growing space in terms of the soil, like a root uh, vegetable, um, like carrots, for example, you might want to make it even, even longer or, or bigger just to get it, um, get it a longer taproot. Because something like a carrot, usually, however long the taproot is initially that it, it makes, is, is going to be the side, the length of the carrot, um, pretty much. Even if you transplant afterwards, it's pretty much as, as deep as it's going to go once it initially that taproot went wherever it stops in the beginning. Okay, so we cut all the way around. All right, so then we have a cut bottle, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our reservoir um, piece, right? And we're just going to cut another, we're going to do another cut. And this one is just going to be as high as you want. So when you take, this is going to be your planter, right? So you want to see how high this is going to be where the soil ends, right? It, it, in the in the reservoir, right? And the wick is going to be coming down. So we don't really need the water to be all the way up. We don't need to, the water to go all the way up to here. We don't want to overwater. So we're going to create a little. We're going to put a little hole right here, so that we have what we call an overflow hole, just to prevent us from, you know adding too much water because it there is a there is a way that you could add too much water to this and then it would become all soggy and you would have mud at the bottom of your planter and you don't want that because then there wouldn't be enough oxygen for the roots to grow does that make sense yes so we're going to cut an overflow hole on the side right here about this height and that's just to make sure that when we're watering we're not overwatering. So I'm literally just cutting like a little um, slit and then widening it out and turning it into a circle. So this is gonna be our water level. The water level will never be higher than this, than this overflow hole right here, okay? So you can see that it's not a perfect circle. I'm not the best cutter, but it does the job. 
okay? So we've got our overflow hole. And now what do we do? So we've got our planter. So now we should put our soil in, right? No. <laughs> we don't want to put our soil in yet because if we put our soil in now, what's going to happen? It's just going to drop right through and we're going to lose all our soil. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, we're going to take our cotton, our cloth, okay, piece, and we're going to fold it in half. We're going to fold it in half and then we're going to drop it down in here and pull it through. Like that. Now this piece seems a little big, so I'm going to cut it. Just take, it's a little too big, so I'm going to cut it up, cut it to a, sm a smaller size. What you want is you want it to be able to, to be in the, in the water, to be able to reach here, and then to be able to rest and hold the soil inside here. So you want to give it enough fabric to do those two things. So I'm going to cut off about a quarter to a third of it here. And then we're going to try that again. So now I'm down to a piece about this size. It's about two, two and a half inches. Maybe even, no, nah, two, two and a half inches. So I'm going to fold it in half again. You can also do it this way. It's easier. So, so there we go. So as you can see, we just want the wick to be able to rest in the water. And then we're going to flatten this part down and add our soil to that. Okay, so I'm going to bring over, so as you can see, this is going to prevent the soil from being lost and it's going to also help transport and be our water channel for, for, our, for our plant. So I've got some seed starting mix. The reason that I'm using seed starting mix instead of just like a regular old potting soil is because we are using this as a way to start seeds. Um, you don't have to start seeds with this. You could also transplant. So you could buy like a plant um, from, you know, wherever, your nursery, or even take a plant that you started in, in maybe a smaller, you know, the, the seed starting trays that have those little cells that are like this size. And this would be a good, like, next step up for that plant to, to develop further and grow bigger. Um, uh, but you can also start seeds with this, and that's what we're going to do. So we've got our soil, all right, and that's pretty much it in terms of like making the sip, right? Simple, right? Really simple. Um, you, we, we cut open the bottle, we created our reservoir, we made our little overflow hole so we don't overwater, and then we created a, um, a growing, we put our, put our growing medium in there. And now all that's left to do is to plant. So we would either be transplanting um, a plant, which we don't have any plants to transplant today, or we can um, start seeds, which is like one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> so um, we've got a ton of seeds here. I brought I do want to. I do want to talk. Oh, sorry. I do want to talk a minute about just um, how you might select. You know, thinking about what you might put in a planter, um, a subirrigated planter of this size. Um, so I chose to do um, some herbs, like basil is a great one that grows well in a small. Can, you can do a lot in a small amount of space with basil. Um, you could probably do as many as like. 10 basil plants and something like this and then later on split them up and plant them out somewhere else to, to grow them bigger. Same thing with arugula, similar um, herb that you can grow. Um, onions. Onions are perfect. You could probably get like easily 20 or 30 onions in there and then you would transplant them out and put them in your raised bed. 
Um, I also have kale, um, which is like a great, you know, very like highly nutritious green, um, super versatile and super uh, hearty. And um, radishes uh, was another one. Um, now with radishes, I would definitely say if you were just going to try to grow the radish all the way to full maturity in this, you probably only want to grow one, maybe two. But if you wanted to grow them and then transplant them, which radishes don't really like to be moved around that much, um, you, could, you could try it. But uh, generally speaking, radishes are kind of want to stay where they're at once they start growing. Okay. And then we've also, and then we've also got a bunch of other um, seeds. Thanks, thank you, um, Robert, for bringing me these. Um, We've got a bunch of other seeds, we've got like broccoli, lettuce, beet, no, beet. Um, these are sprouts, uh, sprouts are actually great for this too, because um, you can just cut and then they would grow back and you can cut them again. Um, here's another sprout mix. That's great for this system as well. Really good for kids too, because kids get in Like, when is it going to be ready to eat? These crops are really good because within a week to two weeks, it's ready to eat. You cut it, put it in your salad or your smoothie. It's really good for kids too. And it's a good way of sneaking those uh, <laughs> fresh veggies, super nutritious veggies in there. All right, so um, I think we're at a point where we're just going to go ahead and start some seeds, which is, I, I think, um, something that we all love to do. I know I love to do it. Um, I'm going to go with the um, arugula. Um, and then just, uh, I'm just going to show you all, this is a pretty tiny seed. It's a small, tiny, tiny seed, the arugula. Um, and I'm going to show you that, uh, the amount, like how many, how many seeds you would put in here, and the the depth, the, the how deep they should go. Okay, so this is our arugula seed right here. So you see, it's super tiny. It's a super, super small. You can probably barely see it on your cameras there. It's a super small seed, right? So. With this, with this, with the bait, the, there's a, a general rule for starting seeds, the depth that you plant them. That rule is whatever the diameter of the seed, so whatever, however, whatever the size of the seed is all the way around, um, you want to plant it three times that size. In the case of something like this, it's literally micro you know, micrometers, <laughs> right? Not even centimeters, micrometers uh, in diameter. And so when you go three times that, you don't even have a quarter inch. You maybe have an eighth of an inch. So for something like arugula like this, you don't even need to make a hole. A lot of people, especially with kids, when you're, when you're doing this with kids, they'll like, they'll take a pencil or they'll take their finger and they'll go, okay, I'm gonna plant this arugula, you know, and it might grow. Because plants, like we say, plants adapt. You're giving it water, you're giving it a growing medium. It might grow, but it might take it a while to get up through there. And it also might dry out, okay? Um, so the appropriate depth for something of this size is literally just a finger compression. So all you need to really do is just make a little, make a little uh, in impression, your impression of your, your thumbprint in the soil and then plant. So the way that I like to do this, the way that I like to think of it, because I'm, uh, my father's from Trinidad and the, the, the national instrument of Trinidad and Tobago, many, some people might know this, is it's the steel pan. The steel pan, which came from the, 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 the innovation of the Trinidadians was 
they took the steel drum, the drum that the oil uh, was being harvested in uh, during, um, I believe it was in the, uh, it was somewhere between World War I and World War II. And they turned, they cut it, and they created a drum out of that. And that's how the steel pan was born. And cool. it kind of looks like when you, in, so inside the steel pan, there are different depressions and there are different depths. And that's what creates the different notes and tones of a steel pan. It kind of looks a little like a steel pan inside of here when I do my depressions with my thumb. So it kind of reminds me of that. So I'm just gonna sprinkle the arugula around into these four or five different depressions that I made. And then instead of, um, you know, covering, and I did about 15 to 20 seeds there, because we'll probably thin them as they grow, meaning we'll take some out to let the others get bigger. Instead of, you know, trying to mess with this any further, all I'm going to do is just sprinkle a little bit of soil on there so we can't see them anymore. And that's deep enough for them. They're so small, they literally, all they need is just that thin little layer of soil on the top. Okay, now, question. How, how should we go about watering this? If we're starting seeds, do we actually want to start out by sub-irrigating this planter with the seeds on the top of the surface of the soil? Probably not. You may want to get a spray bottle. Mm -hmm. Right? And you missed it. Spray. Right, a spray bottle could work. Um, you could also do it just gently. Um, what I like to do is I'll wet, I'll take my, um, you know, an extra piece of cloth that I have and I'll saturate it like completely like a sponge, right? So that's really wet. And then I'll just squeeze it enough for now. And then another thing you could do, I don't have it with me today, but another thing you can do when you're starting seeds is you can take a piece of saran wrap and you can cover this or, or uh, any plastic um, material, like a plastic bag, you could put a plastic bag, invert it, put it over the top, just to hold the moisture in. So it's again going back to just holding water, keeping, um, retaining water so that those seeds can germinate. And then once they germinate, you can remove that. Is there a bee around here? Remove that so that the plants can um, grow vertically. Um, so that's so. This is pretty much. Um, that's it. Um, and then you would just we wait for those to come up, right? So. So, does anybody want to give that a try? Make their own sift. 